The following story has been brought to you by storiestoinspire.org. I was one time when I was a bacher in my yeshiva days. I uh, I went to a what we we used to call it a nursing home when we were kids. There were this was back in the in the nineties, and you could still very easily find uh, Holocaust survivors. So, uh, in fact, there were a lot of Holocaust survivors. So I went there, and uh, I met a guy. I mean, I met lots of people with lots of stories, but one particular story this gentleman tells me about his village in Poland where they had 20 Sifre Torah and uh, 20 Torah scrolls. They had a big wooden shul. And on Simcha's Torah, they would open up the ark and they would bring out all 20 scrolls. And this was his favorite day of the year. So he said that when he went into hiding... His father told him that I'm not going to see you for a while, but when we meet up again, it was close to the time of the high holidays. So the father said, soon we'll meet up again. We'll be back in time together. We'll be back for some chastorah. And I'm going to put you on my shoulders. We're going to have a special dance. I'm going to dance with you on my shoulders for some chastorah. So he says, my father told me that, and I, I never saw him again. Not that Simchas Torah, and not the next Simchas Torah, and not for all the Simchas Torahs of the war, until finally the war was over, and I was in a DP camp, he says, I was one of the youngest people in the DP camp. Generally, there are not kids there. And uh, he says, I was, I was a kid, and I was alone. I was in a DP camp. And uh, like a week after I arrived, it was Simchas Torah. And I remembered my, my father's promise to me, who I haven't seen in years. And I don't know if I'm ever going to see him. So he says... He, he started dancing. And from the way he told it to me, sounds like he was probably the only one dancing, which is quite understandable. There were not too many people in the DP camp, the first Simchas Torah after the war, who were dancing on Simchas Torah. So he says, I was dancing. And some of the people there were mad at me because they thought it was a, a chutzpah. Other people were scared for me because they thought I had lost my mind. So uh, somebody came over, and he like gently took me aside, and he said, "Uh, Yingle, what are you doing? And I told him the story. The last time I saw my father, he said, we're going to get together Simchas Torah as soon as this thing is over. We're going to get together again Simchas Torah. And you're going to dance on my shoulders. So now this thing is over. The war is over. It's Simchas Torah. My father said, we're going to get together now. So what difference does it make if I dance on his shoulders or this time he dances on mine? So here's what I'm telling you. Every soul, every person whose consciousness you got to know while they were in a body... So they've got everything they ever had when you knew them in their embodied state. And the only thing they lost was a bunch of noise, a bunch of distractions. And what they've gained is total clarity and total truth. There's just one thing 
that they're going to need your partnership for. And that is, they need to ride on your shoulders. They need to ride on your shoulders. So when you go and you put on tefillin or you light Shabbos candles or you give tzedakah, give charity or any other good deed that you do with your body. But I repeat myself because good deeds are bodily deeds. All mitzvahs are done with the body. When you do a mitzvah, just remember, have in mind those who are on your shoulders. And have in mind how much pleasure they are gaining from this. Far more pleasure than we are presently capable of even being able to fathom because of our bodies. Our bodies hold us back and distract us. We cannot fathom the pleasure that those who ride on our shoulders have from our mitzvahs when we take them along. Enjoyed this story? Come again. Bring a friend. Stories to inspire dot org.